Hello viewers of my channel, this is a new part of the manhwa which personally I really liked so I highly recommend to watch. And here's a guy who was lucky enough to be in this video. If you also want to get a chance to be in the video, then write something in the comments. And before I start, I want to wish everyone a pleasant viewing experience. The main character was sitting in the cell and thinking about the fact that he was careless. He could not imagine that the city lord would do such a thing. Suddenly Fong heard strange noises. It turned out that it was Sancho, who snuck into the cell of the protagonist. He could not not come when his master was taken under arrest. The servant couldn't believe that the protagonist had done such a stupid thing. While Fong didn't know what he was talking about, the servant told him about people talking about how after Fong found out that his ex-wife was marrying the prince, he went crazy and killed two members of the royal family. The protagonist was surprised at how well the city lord had decided to set him up. Fong thought that, with such an accusation, he might actually be executed. The servant suggested that the protagonist run away, because now was the time, while the guards were changing each other, and he dug a hole in the wall. The protagonist began to say that he was innocent and should not run away, while the servant tried to explain that they had no time at all and should run away as soon as possible. Fong said that he was a member of the Qin family, and he intended to handle this situation with dignity. Suddenly the voices of the guards were heard, and the hero instantly started pushing the servant to run away, and after a moment the passage was covered with straw, and the guards did not suspect anything. The protagonist looked at the family's seal and reflected that he didn't expect that the man his family had helped so much could do such a terrible thing. The protagonist pulled out the seal through the hole, and with the words that he had to go to extreme measures, the seal let out a flame that began to fly into the sky, and then the entire sky lit up with a flame with the name of the Qin clan on it. A moment later, a huge number of soldiers began to run into the place, after which they instantly killed the guards, then bowed to the protagonist and said that they were gathered. Fong said that nothing serious had happened, it was just that a certain person was relying too much on his father. The protagonist instantly told that the guards would need to deal with this person. Each of these people was a true martial arts master. A little while later, a servant was cheering up the guards with all his might, saying that their young master was very wise and he had definitely found a way out of this mess. They had faith in their master and approached the place of execution. People were pointing their fingers towards the gallows and saying that it was still morning and the man had already been hanged. It was true and the corpse was really hanging on the rope, with no sign of life. The servant could not believe what he heard. He was shocked, angry, and saddened. The servant began to cry with all his might and together with the guards to worship and ask forgiveness for what they had failed to do to the protagonist. Suddenly Fong greeted his servant and asked why he was crying. All the servants were amazed at what they had just seen, and then instantly went to hug the protagonist, happy that he was alive. Fong tried to push these fools away, as people were looking at them, while the servants continued to rejoice. The protagonist pointed his finger at the gallows then said that the enemy's father was not as good as his, it turned out that none other than the city lord himself was weighing on the noose. The servant could not understand how the young lord managed to pull off something like that. At that time, the protagonist confessed that it was easy, and asked if the guy knew the thing he was holding in his hands. The servant was amazed at what he saw, because it was a battle order of the Qin family. The hero said that it was enough for the guards to see the sign, as they will instantly arrive and will unconditionally follow the order of the man who called them. The servant asked what order the protagonist had given. Fong was surprised that the servant had not guessed. The enemies dared to infringe on the protagonist's life. It was for this reason that the masters destroyed the city lord's mansion, after which they made his body experience hell. The protagonist was upset that his father had to work very hard to get this battle order, and now it's just nothing because it was used. The servant asked where the enemy of the protagonist was, while Fong smiled and said that the guy should follow him. It turned out that the guy was being lynched, throwing vegetables at him and insulting him in every possible way. He begged people to stop it all. He confessed that he falsely accused the main character, and that he was the only one to blame for all the troubles. Turns out it was the same hole that the servant dug, and this enemy trying to escape got stuck in it. The protagonist said he couldn't kill this guy because his sister had some influence. The protagonist said it was easy for him to clear his name and kill the city lord, but things are more complicated with this asshole. The servant complained that they couldn't kill the bastard, 
and then he came up with an ingenious plan because they could do anything they wanted to this man. The main thing was to keep him alive. The protagonist was surprised because it began to seem to him that his subordinates sometimes surpass him in cruelty. The servants were preparing to teach the boy a lesson that he would not forget for the rest of his life. He, on the other hand, was incredibly frightened and was afraid to say a word. A moment later, a very loud cry of the boy was heard all around, begging not to be touched. The protagonist and his servants decided to leave the guy behind, as the protagonist had the next plan that he intended to execute. While the guy was incredibly beaten up and talking about how evil people are, sometime late at night he felt just awful. Suddenly the guy saw the main Chin security team and thought that they had arrived to finally free him, but in fact a formidable man grabbed an axe, then swung it with all his might, then pointed it at the guy who begged for his life, promising that he would do whatever they asked him to do. As it turned out that the man had used the axe to free him, a young man's voice was heard telling Lin not to worry, for they were his own. He said that he was a relative of the prince, and since the guy's sister was engaged to the prince, he was ordered to take the guy to the capital. The guy started laughing and was very happy, because he really started to believe that he would die in this place because of the main character. The guy with a crazy look began to rub this man that he wants revenge on the protagonist, and that otherwise he will not go anywhere. The young man explained that he was ordered to get the guy to the capital, and asked him not to complicate the process. The boy began to say that if the man could help him, he would ask his sister to tell the prince about his merits, and promise to give half of the proceeds of the mine to this man. After these words, the man confessed that such a request would be very hard to refuse. He ordered the two masters who were at the third level of the quenching stage to move out. At that time, the guy was incredibly happy, because he was sure that the protagonist would not be able to deal with such masters in any way. At that time of night in the Chin family's medical garden, the protagonist was lying tied up, and next to him slept a girl who was pushing him very hard. The protagonist did not understand how this could happen, and then he became confused and remembered that it happened a few hours ago. He told the servants that he was going to go to the misty forest. They thought that the protagonist was going to die. The protagonist made a puppet that watered the plants while the servant appeared out of nowhere and began to tell them that the misty forest held great terrors. He said that in addition to the poisonous fog there are many strong monsters, and in order to take even a small part of the forest Chin family had to sacrifice hundreds of warriors. The servants said that they would not let the protagonist go anywhere, then grabbed the rope. In the present, the protagonist was happy about the environment he was in. He had forgotten that in this era, people were afraid of the misty forest. Suddenly, the protagonist heard a noise outside, and then he instantly activated his divine sense. It turned out to be the same masters who came to kill the protagonist. They knocked out the guards and said that they need to kill only the protagonist, that God forbid the investigation did not start. The protagonist began to get rid of the rope, thinking that one master of the level of these guys can easily kill ten masters of chi and blood. The protagonist began to walk out pretending not to notice anything, thinking that there was no way he could fight in this place. People looked towards the protagonist, assuming that this was their target. Then the huge man decided to start and was instantly behind the protagonist's back, ready to finish the battle in an instant. A moment later, the axe went through the neck of the protagonist, and his head flew off to the side. The guy was surprised that this order was so easy. He reached out to pick up the protagonist's head as proof, but suddenly his face twisted as it turned out to be a dummy. They realized that the protagonist had managed to escape as quickly as possible. The protagonist took out the Tianluo fruit, then sat on his horse and started talking about how he didn't plan to die that night. The guys couldn't believe that the guy deceived them so easily while the hero started to move at a great speed with the help of the horse, thinking about the safety of his people he planned to take the enemies as far away as possible. At that time, the enemies thought that the hero was a brainless fool, for instead of calling the guards he started to run away alone. A moment later, the masters at great speed began to catch up with the protagonist, who was ready for such an outcome and sprayed some liquid in the air, after which it hit the faces of two enemies who were chasing him. The opponents could not navigate properly, even opening their eyes caused difficulty. The protagonist was very glad that his opponents were so stupid because he could not believe that they would fall for his tricks, and then the hero used a divine sense, thanks to which he could see at night as if it were daytime and easily move on horseback. 
one of the enemies was right in front of the protagonist, after which the guys instantly attacked the guy from above. A few moments later, there was a huge explosion from those blows. The protagonist was able to bounce at the last moment, while not understanding how such a thing was possible. He didn't understand how enemies without sight could catch up to him and attack him effectively. The enemy pointed to a horse and said it was a guy, while another man said it was a horse. Suddenly, the protagonist realized that now his enemies are hunters, who are hunting him by scent. One of the enemies pointed in the direction of the hero and said that he was definitely there, after which the enemies instantly began to run after the protagonist, who began to tear his clothes in hopes of spreading his scent around, thus winning the opportunity to escape from these enemies. The enemy was not surprised by the protagonist's attempts to spread his scent to confuse the guys. Suddenly they found themselves on a cliff, and in front of them there was only a misty forest, in which it is definitely not possible to survive. The protagonist was surprised that he turned on the road that led him to the misty forest. Enemies started to say that the guy would definitely not have the courage to jump into this forest. The enemy began to say that if the hero stayed he would at least die without suffering, while the guy crushed one of the fruits, and with a mad expression on his face said that he had huge balls. With these words he began to fall at a great speed straight into the misty forest. He gave his enemies the middle finger saying that he would never give up so easily. The enemies were amazed that the guy actually dared to jump down while the protagonist was flying straight into the misty forest at a great speed. The enemies were saying that the guy would definitely die instantly in that place, they were going to wait for the fog to clear up a bit, and take the hero's head as proof of his death. The enemies were laughing at the top of their voices because of the fact that this guy would die so easily because of the fog. While the protagonist was glowing with happiness, he was glad to be in this place. In this place, he saw a huge amount of medicinal plants that were very old. The protagonist drank an antidote beforehand, for he knew very well that this place had a deadly fog. The protagonist looked at his hand and realized that he didn't have much time. He was going to prepare some remedy from the local herbs. He was glowing with happiness because now he would be working with high quality herbs. Two hours later, the protagonist was working with the herbs and heard a strange noise nearby. The protagonist was amazed that it was a raccoon dog, which is incredibly hard to catch. He assumed it was the effect of his anti-animal pill. Suddenly the hero's attention was attracted by something strange. He began to laugh, because in his head came an ingenious plan to deal with his enemies. Early in the morning when the fog cleared, the enemies arrived in the forest to find the corpse of the protagonist. They searched for the body of the guy, as they thought that he died instantly. A moment later they found the corpse of the hero, and believed that he was suffering before death from poison. The man prepared to chop off the protagonist's head, but suddenly the guy jumped up and launched some darts towards the enemies. They were able to instantly react and dodge, while marveling that the protagonist managed to survive in this place. The enemies thought that it was a very stupid move on the part of the guy, while the hero with a confident expression said that he would really have a hard time injuring enemies of this level, and then asked what would happen if the blood of a raccoon dog collided with a miasma tree in the sunlight. The enemies with full confidence that their situation was not the same said that even masters like them would die from ten breaths, but such an animal was incredibly hard to find. At that time the protagonists started counting down from ten. Suddenly the enemies noticed the fog and didn't realize what was happening. They looked in the direction where the needles hit, then instantly realized that right now they are breathing a poisonous fog that can kill them. The protagonist confessed that he had accidentally found the animal, and instantly realized how it could be put to good use. That was the reason why he risked pretending to be dead, and so that the enemies could not even think of such a thing, he attacked them with darts. The opponents were out of their minds with anger, they were going to take the protagonist with them to the other world. The protagonist was completely confident and was amazed that they reacted so late. He looked with his piercing gaze and said that it was too late, and a moment later the enemies started coughing up their own blood, after which they lost consciousness and fell to the ground, while the protagonist continued to stand with his head proudly raised. The protagonist's enemies were lying on the ground. They were defeated not by brute force but by the protagonist's mind. Suddenly behind the back of the guy appeared the eyes of monsters, they were dogs, in which the hero apologized for borrowing a few drops of blood of their kin, then provided the corpses of enemies to eat these animals, thinking that he not only dealt with the enemies, but also got a huge amount of useful plants. 
while in the main character's house, the servants could not believe that their lord had been killed. They thought it was complete nonsense, while a man threw the protagonist's item and said that it could serve as proof of his death. It turned out to be the bloody saddle of the protagonist's horse. The enemies said that the young man had been injured, after which he had dared to enter the misty forest, where he had definitely died. The boys could not believe what they heard, for the hero really wanted to go to the misty forest. At that time, the enemy was incredibly happy, saying that the fool dared to venture alone into this hellish place. He said that because of the hero's death, the iron mine should return to its original owner, and the medical garden as well. He ordered the royal guard to chase away the servants of the protagonist. The soldiers pointed their weapons at the poor people, to the bastard's words that he now owns all of the protagonist's property. Suddenly, Feng's voice was heard behind the backs of the enemies, who was surprised that the guy dared to flatter him. The protagonist was surprised that the enemy dared to ask for help from the royal guards, then called him a slippery son of a bitch. The girl instantly hugged the protagonist, because she was very happy to see him, and he confessed that he decided to take a night walk in the misty forest. At that time, the enemy with shaking hands could not believe that the protagonist had survived after being in the misty forest. The protagonist said that he just decided to take a walk. Why would he die? A man stepped in and said that he was in this place to discuss the rights to the iron mine. The servant at the time realized that this eunuch is now a representative of the royal family, and the protagonist cannot oppose him. At that time, the protagonist said he didn't give a shit who this man represented. The protagonist was outraged saying that he had been spoiled by the insistence to kill, and it didn't matter what family the man was from, he dared to kill him anyway. The protagonist recalled that a few days ago, the city lord who had decided to join this guy was hanged, and then the protagonist confessed that he had ordered the order to completely destroy the lord's mansion, and that it was his will. The protagonist said that suddenly and in the forest they tried to kill him, but he used the order again and the masters instantly killed the offenders. The protagonist warned that if the enemy dared to offend him, he would use the order again, and then the guards would chop him to pieces, and then asked what the man wanted to discuss. The enemy was shocked that the assassins he had sent were killed, he was shocked that the hero had orders. The man was shaking with fear, he fully realized how scary the thing in the hands of the protagonist was, after which they instantly began to say that they had just come to visit the protagonist after which they all bowed to the protagonist together and wished him success and prosperity. The protagonist said he wouldn't see the guests off because he was a mess, and they apologized for the intrusion and wanted to leave. A moment later they started running away at great speed in fear of the protagonist. The servant was amazed that the protagonist had several orders, and the hero confessed that it was just a shell casing from a used order, which made the servant praise the protagonist's masterful bluff. The girl asked where the protagonist actually went because she was so worried. He said that he had already told her that he was really in the misty forest where he had managed to get a lot of useful herbs. The servant began to ask the protagonist not to lie, because the misty forest is not a place from which you can so easily return, and he asked where the harvest, about which Fong said. The protagonist confessed that he had gathered so many medicinal herbs that he had to supply the horse with them, and then pointed behind his back where the horse was struggling to pull the incredibly heavy load. Inside were incredibly valuable and very rare herbs. While the servants couldn't believe what they were seeing, the protagonist yawned indifferently asking the servants to help unload the harvest. The servant realized that the protagonist's methods were unattainable and assumed he could never understand them. A few days later, the guy was taken to his sister's wedding. He surrounded himself with guards and complained inside the wagon that he had made a huge number of attempts to end the protagonist, and now he wanted to do absolutely nothing. While the protagonist was deep in thought about the royal family stationing troops in his city, he assumed they were beginning to fear him. The protagonist turned to a servant and said that starting today, the wages of all the guards would be doubled. The servant was amazed at this generosity, and didn't understand what the protagonist was planning to do. While the protagonist with a crazy look said that the servant to form a squad, because they will go to the misty forest to clean up. The servant was astonished at such a statement. He didn't understand how he could go to such a dangerous place. While Fong told the servant not to worry and just form a squad, the protagonist thought that this way he would be able to form a huge military force. 
because soon everyone will start to explore places like the Misty Forest. The next day, the guards gathered, who could not believe in the statement of the protagonist. He said that this is not a joke. He also added that not everyone will pass the selection, but who can he will get triple pay. The soldiers rejoiced and could not wait for the moment when the hero told them who would train them. At that time, Fong pointed to himself and said that he would be the person who would prepare the soldiers for transportation. After such a statement, the soldiers were speechless and then immediately began to leave the gathering place with the thoughts that it was early morning and their master as always joking. The servant began to ponder that the main character's foundation was the weakest of them all. How could he teach someone martial arts? The protagonist decided to ignore it all and decided to go shopping with the servant because he needs weapons for his future squad. The servant was shocked that the protagonist was only lucky to get out of the misty forest alive, and he already considers himself a genius. At that time, in one of the restaurants, a man told that the hero had only one order, and that he had deceived them. The man instantly became furious at such news, whereupon the mug instantly shattered on the floor. The herbalist was very angry because the man had dared to spill tea on his foot, and he asked the herbalist what he could do about it. The man was incredibly angry, in fact he was angry because of the protagonist, because he was the reason for what he decided to authorize. Gorilla with great speed began to approach the man, with the intention of hitting him. The man easily stopped the blow of this gorilla with one of his hands, and then asked how the protagonist messed up the man. The gatherer told him that Fong was a lowlife who had gotten him into trouble. The man told the assembler that they were brothers in misfortune, as he also hated Fong. The man learned about the mysterious alchemy teacher, and decided that the situation was now clearer. The gatherer started talking about how the most important thing for an alchemist is herbs, and they need to destroy the main character's garden first. The man said that there was no way he could do something like that because it would start a war between the royal family and the Qin family. The gatherer told of a pill that attracts animals, which could be used to raise the protagonist's garden to the ground. The gatherer confessed that in order to realize this plan, he just needed money. The man was incredibly happy about this opportunity. He confessed that he was ready to spend any amount of money to solve this issue. While the protagonist was busy making pills for the body. Usually, alchemists have a hard time with this process because it is very difficult to create these pills. But the protagonist closed his eyes and then put his hand on the cauldron. He is the god of pills, it is quite easy for him, the quality of the pills was from 1 to 10, and the ones he just made were at 9. The guy threw one of the pills into his mouth, he thought about the fact that it had been a long time since he had made such cheap pills, he also thought that if he wanted to sell the pills he should lower their quality. Unexpectedly, the protagonist was able to break through to the sixth level of the chi and blood stage, the effect of the pill was amazing. The protagonist took out the next pill, which should have a positive effect on his body, because growing too fast was dangerous. The guy with a smile on his face grabbed this pill with his teeth. The protagonist was determined to become the best. He thought about being the first to start the battle for the Misty Forest. At that time, the girl was watching the protagonist's room and wondering if he was able to overcome the foundation of his cultivation. The girl thought about how it was very hard for the protagonist after his injury and decided that he had decided to try hard to become stronger. The girl firmly decided that she would also do her best, and right now she was going to not let anyone interfere with the main character. At that time, the smell of some pill began to spread to the forest, suddenly announced an alarm, because fierce beasts were approaching them. The girl could not believe that fierce beasts appeared at such an inopportune moment, for the protagonist still had not completed the breakthrough. Suddenly, the spear of one of the soldiers broke against the tough skin of the beast. Although the soldiers were able to surround the animal, they could not break through its tough armor. While the beast easily attacked them and threw them high into the air, suddenly, an arrow began to fly towards the monster at a great speed. People were shocked that it was able to affect this animal. It turned out that it was a girl who used her bow to attack the enemy. The guards began to cheer and praise the girl, as suddenly they were attacked again by the monster, which made the soldiers run away because they only made these beasts angry. While the enemies rejoiced that they had successfully succeeded in their plan, because such a beast, even a master of the final stage, is not easy to cope with. They were very much waiting for the moment when the protagonist would know despair and finally perish. 
while the monster was moving towards the little girl at a great speed. She prepared to shoot from her bow with great determination in her eyes. The arrow bounced off the body of this strong monster. While the soldiers were shouting that there was no way the girl could stop this beast, it was getting closer and closer to her. She grabbed her sword, then confessed that she had to help the protagonist. She could not let this beast pass through her. Swinging her sword, she thought that even if she died in this fight, she would not retreat. Suddenly, the sword instantly broke into small pieces from the animal's solid body, and the girl's body began to be covered with countless wounds. It seemed that she could not resist this animal at all, while the enemies were incredibly happy that the animal would destroy the protagonist very soon. The monster was a few centimeters away from ending the poor girl's life, as suddenly she opened her eyes and saw the main character's chest. All the guards were shocked by what they saw. The protagonist flying to the ground said that anyone who infringed on the lives of his people deserved to die. The guy landed on the roof after he found out that the girl was okay. He asked her to leave the battlefield and leave everything to him. The girl began to say that the protagonist could not defeat such a monster because it was on a completely different level. While Fong was completely confident and began to say that he would not allow any animal to do whatever he wanted. While the enemies mocked the protagonist, because in their opinion he didn't even stand a chance against this animal. The monster pointed its horns in the direction of the protagonist. While the soldiers were worried about their master, the enemies couldn't wait for the denouement of it all. While the protagonist didn't understand why people were panicking so much, he grabbed his dagger and said with a brutal look that he would just blow up the monster. After that, the hero instantly used the moonlight technique, thus attacking the enemy. The dagger pierced through the thick skin of the beast, which stunned the opponents, and the allies were shocked by the demonstrated strength, while the girl was delighted by the protagonist. The protagonist thought that normally only masters of the tempering stage could infuse chi into weapons, but since he had studied a strong martial art and had advanced to the seventh stage, it was also possible for him to do so. In his previous life, the protagonist was familiar with countless martial techniques even though he couldn't use them, but things were completely different in this life. The protagonist directed another attack towards his opponent, which instantly reached its target and was able to pierce through the beast's skin, thus damaging it. The protagonist began to move at a great speed, thinking that Moonlight is an amazing martial art. Then the protagonist was right in front of his opponent, which made the soldiers worried because fighting with this monster in close proximity is the same as going to certain death. As the monster prepared to finish off the protagonist, the girl started screaming, worried about her master. The monster launched its attack, and the ground around it began to crumble from its power. The enemies cheered. The girl began to cry, while the soldiers were anxious. And the protagonist himself heard the words of the enemies and asked who it was that died. The protagonist hovered above his enemy. Thanks to the moonlight technique, he could easily dodge such attacks. The protagonist prepared to deliver a decisive blow and then he landed with all his might, destroying everything in his path and sealing the beast directly into the ground. None of the people watching could believe this was actually happening. While the monster was literally destroyed in an instant, which amazed the soldiers who immediately began to run to the protagonist. The girl also admired the protagonist, who looked very cool standing on the corpse of this animal. The protagonist with pride in his voice asked his soldiers whether they still consider him a man who is not able to teach them something. Without waiting for an answer, the protagonist said that now the soldiers have one last chance to enroll in his team. After that, all the soldiers raised their hands, they were incredibly happy about this opportunity, because they were sure that with the instruction of the protagonist they will instantly become stronger. The protagonist was pleased with this attention and asked the guys to calm down because they need to take the body of the monster to the warehouse because he had some plans for it. The guys started dragging the huge corpse of the animal towards the warehouse, while the protagonist realized that behind all this is a pill, the smell of which he could smell. He was sure that someone was involved in all this. Then the hero instantly used the divine feeling, and just as quickly found the enemies who began to argue among themselves. They were blaming each other for the defeat, and were ready to tear each other apart. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video to the end. It really makes me happy when I read your comments. So please share your opinion about this video in the comments. I would also like to ask you to give me a like if you want to see the continuation of this manhwa. Then I will start posting videos more often.
Thanks again to everyone for watching this video. Good luck everyone. See you soon.